Content or by everything. Ladies and gentlemen, your next speaker is the leader of the UK Independence Party. He gave an amazing, amazing media appearance on the Daily Politics last week. It's Gerard Batten! Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Now, I, I don't know about you, I often enjoy a nice walk on a Sunday, but I don't think I was really prepared for today. I'd like to congratulate you all for turning up. I'd like to congratulate all the organisers of this march, particularly also the veterans and the football lads for whom the football lads and the veterans uh, who ensured that it was a nice, peaceful walk from Hyde Park. And of course, I'd like to congratulate the police who have the unenviable task of having to turn out on a Sunday in order to police the other end of this demonstration. Look what we've got here today. Thousands of honest, decent, patriotic people who don't need a bodyguard, or not exactly a bodyguard, they don't need to be policed. And what have you got down that end? You've got the masked, cowardly thugs who want to stop you asserting your right to free speech. Now what is free speech? We've all turned out today to celebrate it. Well, let me give you the Universal Declaration of Human Rights definition 1948. Everyone has the right to freedom of opinion and expression. The right, this right includes freedom to hold opinions without interference and to seek, receive and impart information and ideas through any media regardless of frontiers. Well, it's not legally binding and we know that in many places it's not adhered to at all. But in Britain, we had very good free speech traditions up until fairly recently. There were no laws for free speech, but there were no laws until recently against free speech. And of course in America, it's protected under their constitution. Well, freedom of speech is vital to Western civilization. It must be free to discuss ideas and issues, and that's what we've done over the last few centuries. And look what we've added to the world in terms of our law, our political systems, our science, our art, our literature, and our culture. It's put the modern world where it is today. That's what our freedom of speech has achieved in the last three to 400 years. And now it's under attack. And how is it being attacked? Well, about three or four main means of doing that. One is name calling. Anybody now that says something which is not acceptable to the political and media establishment is labelled. You might be a racist, you might be a homophobe, you might be this phobe or that phobe, but you are labelled and given a name so that you can be marginalised and intimidated from not talking. And we have censorship. We have Tommy Robinson recently taken off Twitter. And some of you will have noticed over the years, do you remember Dr David Bellamy who did those marvellous programmes on the BBC? He was taken off because he wouldn't subscribe to the man-made climate change theory. And not only that, another chap who's had that experience, Piers Corbyn, who's Jeremy Corbyn's brother. He's actually, no, no, he's a very nice chap, I've met him, and he is an expert meteorologist. He's got a business that conducts, uh, you know, he makes money out of predicting the weather. He's no longer on the BBC because he doesn't believe in man-made climate change either. So he's been dropped. And then, of course, we have universities, no platforming people. Well, I thought the idea of universities was to actually discuss things and arrive at a consensus of what's what based on all the arguments. I never went to university, so obviously I have a misunderstanding as far as that's concerned. And then we have this now, this new concept of hate crime. I'd like somebody to describe to me what a love crime is. All crimes are hateful. 
they're normally perpetrated by people with no conscience or fairly hateful themselves. So what's a hate crime? Well, let's have a look for a definition, shall we? Now, if I quote you the Public Order Act of 1986, it says, uh, just to give you a brief overview, nothing in the Act uh, which actually prohibits or restricts discussion, criticism, expression, antipathy, dislike, ridicule, insult or abuse of particular regions or beliefs or practices of their adherents, etc., etc. It seems to be telling you that you have the freedom to criticise belief systems and ideologies. But now look at the most recent police and Crown Prosecution Service interpretation of that act. And I'll read it to you. If someone does something that isn't a criminal offence, but the victim or anyone else believes it was motivated by prejudice or hate, we would class this as a hate incident. The, though, the perpetra, though what the perpetrator has done may not be against the law, their reasons for doing it are this means it may be possible to charge them with an offence. Now just think about that for a minute. What it means is that someone can be charged with a criminal offence for its expressing an opinion that isn't a criminal offence, but because someone took offence at their opinion, they can be charged. This is Orwellian. Well, I'm now going to commit a hate crime, ladies and gentlemen. And you are all my witnesses. Now, a few days ago, it was Karl Marx's 200th birthday. Now, I hate Marxism. I hate communism. I hate what it's done to the world. I hate the repression, the suffering, the murder that has been caused around the world and which in many countries it is still causing. Now are there any Marxists out there who are going to take offence at what I have just said? For example, John MacDonald, the Shadow Chancellor of the Exchequer, is a Marxist. If he was offended at watching me say this, I could be guilty of an offence and I could be charged. And I shall look forward to my day in court. Now, how did we reach this insane situation? Well, it's our old friends, political correctness and cultural Marxism. Now, you'll all know where political correctness came from. It was invented in communist countries because the political system uh, didn't actually describe reality. It was unreal. But on the other hand, you couldn't speak against it, so what was going on was called politically correct. It may have been incorrect in the world of sanity, but it was correct in the world of Marxist politics. So they invented political correctness to describe it. And that's where we are today. Um, what we're seeing with political correctness is a kind of an unholy alliance between the left and big international business. Because what they're trying to bring about is a global, globalist system controlled by a centre, by an elite at the centre. You get socialist policies imposed from you by things like the European Union, and the European Union actually produces legislation at the behest of big business which can cope with it while smaller businesses can't. It is an unholy alliance of those who want to take away your freedoms for different reasons. And of course, the big elephant in the political and media establishment's room is Islam itself. We have imported into Western civilization a dark age ideology. That is to say, the literalist interpretation of that ideology. And that now represents a great, uh, a great threat to our freedoms and our freedom of speech. And as Islam increases, 
you will see more calls for legislation to prevent us criticising it. And I always emphasise to you, criticise and talk about the ideology, because that's what matters. I've met a lot of ex-Muslims who tell me that a lot of Muslims don't like the ideology, but because it's a cult, they cannot rebel against it. Well, let's help them rebel. Let's start talking about it. <clears throat> so there you are. That's where we are. What can you do about it? Well, there are two things you can do about it, in my view. Number one is to keep on exercising your free speech. Always do it rationally. Always do it politely. Always talk about issues. Always talk about things. Always talk about ideas. We never want to insult individuals. We don't want to be gratuitous about, uh, gratuitously saying nasty things about people. It's not about people. It's about ideas. Use your free speech. Number two. You have to organise politically. You can have a march of thousands of people like we've got today. You've had them before. Do you remember there was a march of a million people against the Iraq war? There was another, was it nearly a million people against the countries, uh, for the Countryside Alliance? Did it make any difference? No! Why not? Because Mrs May and pri the Prime Minister and all the MPs in Westminster, there's only one thing they care about, and that is votes gaining votes or losing votes. If you want to defend your free speech, if you want to defend your country, then you have to organise politically. You can join a political party, you can form a new one. I'm biased because I'd like you to come and join mine. I'd like you to join UKIP. But you will only change things when you can threaten Westminster down the road. UKIP organised for 23 years. We didn't need an MP in Parliament to force David Cameron to get the referendum. We got the referendum, and now because we don't have MPs, they are trying to betray it. So what I'd like to leave you with, ladies and gentlemen, is a thought. I want to tell you about the kind of political party I want UKIP to be. It already is, but I want it to improve. And I want to tell you about the country we want to live in. I'm sure you would agree with me. We want a free country, free of the European Union. Free to make our own laws. Free under our own democratically elected government, whoever may they be. We want a country where our children are not told to be ashamed of their history, but where they're told to be proud. We want a country which is at ease with itself because it's proud of its history, it's proud of what it's done, it's proud of what it is, it has a vision for the future, and we want to be good friends and neighbours with all the other countries of the world. Thank you. Man, say it straight. Man, don't listen to BBC. Man, don't listen to. Your next speaker is the leader of the Four Britain Party. It's Anne Marie Waters! Oh, wow! Wow, wow! Hello, London. And look around.